we are going to move on to the Rangers. And before I actually mention moving on to the Rangers, check out our channel after the show for this man, Philk. Sorry, he's over there on this one. Uh, Philk's good, bad, and ugly game reviews. And if Casey Philk isn't doing a broadcast, always check our Facebook page, our group page, because Philk will have it on there in written form as well. But the Rangers going in opposite directions from the Islanders. Uh, they, well, they, they beat the injury riddled slash COVID riddled Islanders on Wednesday night. And then in the, in the Thanksgiving showdown, they beat the Bruins five to two, our Tevin Panarin game winning goal and Julian Goche to assist. Rangers right now sit in third place, 13, four and three. You got to ask this question. And it sounds weird for me to even ask this right now, Phil, are the Rangers becoming an elite team? I'm going to hold off on saying elite because okay. th- that implies that th- they're really, really up at the top. I think they're playing a good stretch of hockey right now. I think a lot of pieces are coming together. You're starting to see someone like Julian Gauthier turn the corner. I think his his last game against Boston was the best game of his entire career. <clears throat> he absolutely powered through Jakob Zaboral to make that play to Alexi Lafreniere for his goal. He was all over the place. He was a mm-hmm. force at both ends along the boards. That line's been great, that third line of Heedle, Lafreniere, and Gauthier. Uh, three former first-round picks all playing together. I mean, that goes to show you what happens when you can properly utilize talent. Hi, David Quinn. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't do so. Goodbye. But, um, yeah, you know what? Gerard Gallant's pressing the right buttons, too. That's another thing that I'm just starting to see. He's made adjustments in these games. And you, you saw it against Toronto. The, the, the passing, the execution in that game for the first two periods was just bad. And then he made an adjustment in the third period, and they came out like a house of fire and almost won that game. And they almost tied it, I should say. And then the second, the game against Boston, because uh, I'll try to keep this short, but the game against Boston, they definitely came out. And after that second goal, it was the shift right after the Rangers took over the game after that, after that goal from that shift forward. They owned that game. So Gallant's pressing the right buttons. He's getting the right guys into the lineup. Capo Caco is finally starting to come around. Alexi Lafreniere is starting to play better on a more consistent basis. Artemi Panarin's back. Adam Fox is a Norris-level defenseman, as always. What what else is new? And Igor Shesterkin has got to be a Vezina frontrunner. So, I mean, a lot of the things are going right for this team. I would just pump the brakes on elite. I, I think that they need to play some better teams which they've shown that they can do, and that's something that's impressed me. While they've played down to the bad teams, they've played up to the good ones. And the game against Boston was proof of that. The game's against Toronto. They beat Florida. Florida. I I mean, Calgary was the only one where they really looked bad against a real good team. But Calgary's been wiping the floor with everybody. So... I mean, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be careful when I say elite. I'm I'm just being cautiously cautiously optimistic. That yeah, I'm gonna be careful saying elite too. Uh, what I'm gonna get in with this is that I'm starting to see real chemistry. I started saying it with the Islander segment of maybe there's a blessing in disguise. Yes, exactly. Yes, Lucas. Um, yes. Maybe, maybe there's a blessing in disguise that Sammy Blay went down. Not that. I wanted him to go down or anything, or, I mean, I certainly hope he's going to make a full recovery and be back on the Rangers next year, but it inserted Julian Gauthier and Gauthier has played his best hockey as a New York Ranger right now. Absolutely. And it seems like he's a better fit. And again, where you're yes. getting guys I that are coming too. in. Yeah. You get guys that are coming in and they're ready to play and they've been watching that that's that's a testament to your coach. Your coach is keeping all these guys ready. Uh, look at what Barry Trotz has been able to do for years with the Islanders. That Should, he always got the head, presses the right button. Can we just but, get Jared Tenori fired into the sun, please? Uh, yeah, his drop pass last week uh, versus Sabres was amazing. Sure, let me Anthony, turn around and to the forward, and then the forward put the puck in my own net. Uh, yeah. Which way did it go, George? Well, a lot of my teammates will say I used to do drop passes to no one, but that's also because I used to think that there were people behind me. Uh, usually it's during a line change. But anyway, moving on from my mistakes. Uh, Anthony, Phil touched on it before. And it was actually one of the questions I was going to ask. 
how close is Igor Sisterkin to getting ready to uh, getting Vesta consideration? Um, I mean, he's he's definitely one of the one of the better goalies um, in the league this year. He's got a nine thirty three save percentage. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I think I think right now you got to go with Jacob Markstrom as the as the favorite to win the oh yeah win the Vesna. Um, I mean, he's got I think he's got five he's got five shutouts. Oh. Um, and he's he's been he's been fantastic, um, and I honestly I can't even see him saying this name because when he was drafted by the Stars years back, um, and nothing really developed. I thought Jack Campbell was going to be a nobody, but I mean you can't you can't deny his his statistics on a on a Maple Leafs team that's really not known to be good defensively. Uh, I think he's got a, a safe percentage that's around nine. You know, like around six and a one yeah. six four GAA on real. All right, yeah, I thought it was around there nine forty five, nine forty six. Um, you know, he's he's been <laughs> he's been absolutely uh, absolutely fantastic for Toronto. So um, I, I think you got to put those two guys ahead of Shesterkin right now. Um, but I mean, Igor Shesterkin, and we listen to you guys. We, we've we've talked about this. Um, Igor Shesterkin um, is, is has been expected to be an elite goaltender in this league. Um, and I think he's definitely going to win a Vesna, you know, or, or couple in his career. Um, but as of, as of right now, this moment, yes, yeah, you know, sure. Things could change and, you know, Campbell and Markstrom could falter and just could be consistent the rest of the year and he can get, he can get votes. Um, but right now I would say you got to go with uh, Markstrom and Campbell. And just because they're always tied with each other, don't forget Ilya Sorokin's got a 928 save percentage. So a couple of less percentage points than Shesterkin um, on a bad Islander team. So, um, you know, those two guys are always going to be close to each other. So, but I got to, I'll, I'll say this real quick. If it's not for the fact that Calgary and Toronto are playing better as a team than the Rangers, I, I, I would give it to Shister. I, I, I know I'm biased. But Shesterkin is playing behind a worser team than those two, and he's got comparable numbers. If Sorokin's Islanders were above 500 and they were close to a playoff spot right now, I would put him right in the conversation because he's been phenomenal. That game against Pittsburgh, if it wasn't for him, Pittsburgh could have blown the Islanders out of the water. They could have absolutely blown them out of their own building. But Ilya Sorokin said no. And he said, I'm going to win this game. And he felt that short. So I, I, I got to say, between Shesterkin and Sorokin have been more impressive than the other two, if you ask me. I know the numbers are gaudy on Markstrom, but I think the other two have been more impressive. You can, I mean, you, you could definitely make those case. Um, and you also, too, you got you got to give some, you got to give some props to Sergey Bobrovsky. He had, he's had a decent ba- bounce back season. Yeah. Um, you know, but he also another another one. He plays probably behind the best team in the league. Yeah, right now. yeah. So, um, I'll say this: uh, three things. One, first, if you have a microphone, you should probably put it in front of you before you start your podcast. So, uh, <laughs> oops, sorry if uh, my my sound was a little bit quiet. Going to uh, multiple Vezina trophies. Thank you, Anthony. But after all, Henrik Lundqvist should have won multiple ones, and. Uh, yeah. They, that just that just didn't happen because they didn't vote that way. I still don't, have no idea why. Uh, and the, lastly, my concern for Campbell and and Sisterkin, out, of, out of the three guys, we even mentioned Markstrom in there. Markstrom is the only one to play a full season. Campbell is topped mm-hmm. out at twenty nine games. Mark uh, Sisterkin is topped out. I think it at fifteen to twenty. I, I actually forgot to look up his numbers, but. You're talking about guys when you throw a full workload on them. I always call this the Yaroslav Halak rule because Yaroslav Halak broke down as the seasons went on. It wasn't until he had a career high in games when he played his first year with the Islanders that actually he was okay. But he, 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 he you, you throw more games at the guy, he breaks down. And I, I get worried about goalies that have not had a full season. That's where I get worried. And it happens a lot. And you know what? I can't believe I'm going to say his name because of how he played in the playoffs. But you got to give him his due. Uh, Phil was giving him some props on Twitter the other day during the game. Um, but Tristan Jari's got a 9.38 save percentage, and his goals against is a one uh, one point. I forget the exact number, um, five eight maybe or something along those lines. Um, he's been really good too. So you you got to give you got to give him a lot All of credit. All credit to well. Jocelyn Tebow. I mean Tristan Jari. Like 
seriously, the, he's got the worst glove I've ever seen. And it's only going to be a matter of time until people exploit it again. Or maybe when he gets back in the playoffs, he'll put money on the offensive <laughs> team and yeah. get an assist in a game five overtime winner. What goalie ever throws the puck through the middle of the ice in overtime? Anyway. Yeah, I, I, you know what? The pass is a pass there, but I, t- I tell you right now, the redem- the mother load of all redemption towards this season is probably Tristan Jari's. I have not – he has bounced back, and he's a big part. Uh, two reasons for Pittsburgh's success. And we'll get, we'll, we'll get to the other on one later on, but <clears throat> Tristan Jari is one of the big two. So. I mean, it's – I and, and look, maybe he'll convert me into a believer. And maybe I'll just say good regular season goaltender, bad in the playoffs. Uh, but, I mean, it, it's going to be a while till I predict for, uh, Pittsburgh to win a playoff series again, especially if he's the lead, the lead <laughs> dog. Okay, everybody, what do you think about the Rangers? Are they an elite team in the making or an elite team right now? Uh, Igor Sesterkin, is he going to be a Vesna finalist? Throw it all down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And once again, tonight after the game, that man over there will be doing a good, bad, and the ugly. And hopefully I'll be able to tune in myself and watch that. All right. We are going to uh, do a bar talk segment as soon as I can knock off that. All right. And we actually get wow, this... here to do these while we... Uh... While we uh, do this, can I can I promote drinking while we? Uh, while I'm we not sure yeah. if you actually can drink on YouTube. I know you can on TV, but it will, we'll have to find that one out. Although, then again, I already <laughs> did that back during the summer. <laughs> ah, I remember that. I remember that. Here you go. I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this. Oh my god. And by the way, I still think Taylor Hall is the Bryce Harper of hockey. I mean, <laughs> oh no! What are you well, trying you know, to say, Joe? Give, no. Yeah, no, you gotta no. give you gotta give some credit. Phil Phil has been killing it with that. Although, I mean, and thank when, you, when, sir. When thank eventually Anthony's schedule clears up, he will be doing some of these as well. But uh, after all, there's a lot a lot on our plates. But everybody. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.